April 25th, 2012 at 5.15 p.m. Sentry's out here on another secret mission. Now thus far, I fished a little while before I started the video. Just wanted to get a feel for things and doesn't look like things are going to be too good. I've hooked and lost one. But we're going to see. One thing that's happening here, I think there, some of the gills are feeding about right on top. So I'm going to take the float, move it closer to the bait, and see if that does any good. Let's see if it works. I've been fishing it down roughly three and a half to four feet. And like I say, I've just had that one, one gill on. But I'm gonna run this up real shallow and just have it right under the surface. I don't know if they're feeding on some type of bug or what, but we'll see if this will work. I see them working right out here in front of me. Yeah, they, they hit it already. Come on, take it. I think it's real small ones though. I mean, I don't even know if they're credit card size or if indeed it is bluegill. One thing I meant to check on the camcorder, make sure I pressed the <laughs> record button, got it engaged fully. Let me check on that. See if my light's on. I wish this had a front indicator light, but it doesn't. And yes, apparently it is recording. I'm trying to watch the time. Yes. Okay. Pardon the interruption. All this is still a work in progress on the video. And just to tell you this, uh, I found some sort of a bank of infrared lights and I can't remember how many's on it but I think it will help improve the night shot mode on my standard definition camera and for this one I found some white LEDs in a bank like a rectangular bank of 160 white LEDs and they say it's good for out to about 30 feet. So, if that is correct, then I may be able to use the high def camcorder for recording some night video. I certainly hope so. I'd love to have color at night. Now this is a spot on Boone Lake that I have never fished before. I mean, I've been up here in my boat a few times and once back in the 70s and I remember that that trip in the 70s I was fishing an old uh, shyster uh, spinner and I got about a seven and a half pound channel cat on that in this particular area in fact it is like pointing over here I don't know no you can't see that but on down, if you can see over the top of my head, there's a pretty sharp bluff right there, real sheer rock bank. And I believe it was somewhere in that vicinity. But uh, back at that time, I didn't have a whole lot of use for, for catching catfish, and now I'm totally dominated by that, the flathead in particular. As those of you who watch my videos know, but it uh, it appears that this is going to be slow going today. And I did try for a little while, and they robbed the the hook, the bait. I tried some of these uh, 
crappie or crappy, whatever your preferred pronunciation of the word is. Um, these nibbles, and they clean the hook, but uh, like I say, I think it must be very tiny minnows or something in here. Say so I've just had that one one gill on. Now I saw something playing right there. I'm gonna try to flip over. Now my line's all twisted around, or it slipped. Let me try that before I adjust the float. Teach it out where they were, roughly. There may be some type of small insect some that's hatching off or something. Uh, you might say in the trout world, emergers, I believe is the correct term. I fish some in a sort of a caddis or catus there again, your preferred defin or, uh, pronunciation. Used to fish those a lot for trout. Was quite successful with them. But it's been, as far as fly fishing, it's been many years now since I've really actively used the fly rod. Especially since I got caught up into cat fishing and I get more excited about the, just the anticipation of catching a, fish well in the excess of 10 pounds. Say so I'm not going to keep shooting a lot of video while I'm, especially while I'm not doing anything or the fish haven't picked up. I'll probably try to do this in small five to 10 minute segments so that I won't be burning up a lot of battery power. Try to check the time, see what, how long I've been on this. Okay, about five minutes into this one looks like. Whoop, there was a pretty good hit just when I started to twitch the rod. Try to tease him here a little. Still bumping, but barely. Up. Okay, there. Now I didn't bring my little forceps with me today. I had them clipped on my over shirt. Up. He's gonna fool around and get away from me. Uh. <laughs> there he is. One little one to start the bait. Get the aerator going. I thought, don't tell me my batteries are dead. There it goes. Okay, one for bait. Maybe we'll get to do the Another flathead trip. Oh, to those of you who viewed my video about the lost rod and me messing up my knee, I want to give a report on that. Uh, it's at, uh, what shall I say, 95 to 98% now that uh, it's better. Still a little tender, but I'm not hobbling now. So, thankful for that still have to watch it you know getting on gravel and stuff like that because I don't want to twist it over and get it back in that same shape again because it was pretty rough now normally this lake seems to produce a lot more bluegill than what it does on my primary lake of Watauga. Now last year, we there was only a time or two that we were able, and I wasn't fishing for them personally, 
right then, but uh, Bunny and his son, Jordan, they were trying to catch him, and I mean, couldn't hardly buy a strike. I mean, I think there were just one or two times where they really got into a bunch of gills. So, a lot of times, you know, we were really hurting for bait, and we'd run out quickly in a night of flathead fishing, like, especially if uh, the whole gang got together and each of us fishing, you know, maybe three rods. You know, normally that's, uh, well, it depends. Uh, I want to say mostly the maximum that I fish. There will be a time or two when I'm out in the boat that I might put five. I may end up dropping this thing or moving the float on up the line a bit and try it out a little deeper again. Right now I'm not seeing that much surface activity. Oh, yep, took it away. <laughs> took it away from that one. <laughs> I turned my head a little bit, and he slammed it, had it under. I think uh, we, well, Bunny's been setting out uh, minnow trap, and been getting some pretty good creek uh, creek minnows. And there's another river near us that has uh, some good chubs in it now. Well, shoot, they're taking it under and I'm missing them. But uh, Bunny and Jordan, I mean, got into some big chubs last year. But I don't reckon that we ever had uh, had a run on them. Now, old Linkless, he, he swears by them, you know, if, like when he used to run limb lines. But now, who can believe old Linkless? I mean, here's a guy that puts fish away in the water. <laughs> now, to talk about old Linkless, he and his wife went to Douglas Lake. I see they got back Saturday, I think it was. But they, they really got into some bass down there. A lot of good looking fish. Up, oh, something was running these minnows. And so that's what it is. It's little minnows, mostly, that's been doing this surface activity. That's the reason I hadn't been pulling that float under. They're about too small. But something got them stirred up, and they were skirting across the top of the water, coming out of it. Because if one takes it and he runs under that log, Get it on away from that. Drop it on the other side. Now I don't think I have the camera at an angle where you can see the float unless I pitch it on out of ways. You know, I was trying to find and determine and get a reference point of what you know, since I'm new to this on the, putting something on a tripod, what have you, but I was trying to do a reference of something with me down here about my height, so I was about a foot above this stump. Well, there was a good hit, and I wasn't paying attention. But anyway, that's the reference point, and I don't know if it's going to cut me off somewhere around the waist or what. Now we've had a pretty good cold snap past few days and you know I did fish Saturday night unproductive trip and you saw part of that as I explained about the uh, almost losing the rod on Friday night but I decided to go last night and it was about 10.30 I guess. Got started fishing though. I didn't start fishing until about 11. Uh, I ended up doing some driving around because I thought I was going to try something else and 
wind was so bad and I about decided not to fish but I ended up fishing from about 11 to 11.30 and was just casting plugs and wind about took me off my feet two or three times big gust come through but uh, I'd only been there about five or ten minutes when you know, I was reeling in and I saw my plug on out. See, I was fishing where there were lights and I saw a big shape. I'm about positive it was, you know, pretty good sized bass. But that was the only thing that I saw other than at one time I saw a fish break at another light pole. I thought they, you know, by chance might really get started in there, but I threw uh, just a couple of different types of plugs. I threw swim baits and uh, that lipless, uh, lipless crankbait that I've been catching those walleye and bass on. Now if I decide to stay over here after dark, I'm not going to be able to record. I didn't bring my standard camcorder so uh, this camera now until I get some other lights is useless in the dark so I don't even know for certain if I brought my little uh, digital camera for just regular photos but I mean this one has that capability and it'll take fair shot if I shine my my headlight on it and my camera phone I don't know why it doesn't do as well as what I had hoped and it's supposed to shoot about a 8 megapixel picture but at night even with the flash and all I can't seem to get any decent results out of it Well, for right now, I'm going to cut the camera off, see how long we've been going here. Uh, five, 15, that's 15, about 17 minutes. We'll let this ride for a bit. So, until we get everything back in order and maybe start catching some more fish. This is Sentry, signing off. Well, it's been an hour since I cut it off. And there has been literally nothing. Uh, I did have one hooked and then I did catch one little old minnow about that long. So that's what's been doing most of the pecking. So, I have decided I'm going to try throwing the spinner for a bit and see if I can pick up anything. So, we'll let this record here a little bit. I'm going to start off with a minnow spin. Hooks may be a little big for some of the bluegill, but if we can find any at all. So, let's give it a shot. I know a spinner has always been one of my favorite things since I was a kid. It's one thing I started with and I always had very good success, especially with that old shyster. I've caught just about everything that swims, well, in the lakes that I fish on that. I've caught sauger, I've caught catfish, bass, crappie, bluegill, They're just a, a good all-round lure. But it really gets exasperating. You come out on something that normally is so easy to catch as a bluegill. And either you hit a day 
when they're just not doing anything or, or like this spot I've, first time I've ever fished it and it's certainly not showing me much even though I know from things that I've seen on my graph in the boat this ought to be a good area too for catfish and I've never fished it at night here uh, specifically for cats where I used to fish most of the time was uh, on down the lake and you know back in the 70s and you know I caught a good many bass back then but just things like I say from what I've seen on the depth locator and see there's a, a creek that feeds this and I don't remember exactly how deep it is out here but it's pretty deep uh, I don't remember how the channel runs and so on I can get an idea from looking on upstream here it comes around this bend so I know about where that uh, the channel uh, drop is and it appears that like there's a flat that runs off there so that ought to be a really good place to set up I'm gonna have to take that into consideration if I bring my boat over here any this year but I'm really surprised on bluegill normally I mean there's enough stuff here in the water that ought to be holding them unless it's just they haven't decided to turn on yet well I had a peck just then <laughs> using a little old uh, ultralight 5 foot ultralight G Loomis rod with a Shimano Stratic or Stratic have you pronounce it and this is a dandy little old rod. I've enjoyed uh, catching trout on it. And I did catch a pretty good size little spotted bass on it once. It really gives you a fit. You know, fishing four pound line. See, there's, uh, I don't know, no, I don't think the camera angle is good, but if you see this rock, if you can see any of it in front of me, I'm not sure if you can or not. Uh, there's a lot of that same thing right out in the water directly in front of me and plenty of good stuff for those bluegill to hide around and I've caught them in you know similar places like this many times well the minispin does not seem to be doing anything I've had that one little peck on it and that's been it don't really want to leave this spot and have to get set up. I, I checked another spot earlier and but there were several people in there so I just uh, rode on about another 12 or 15 miles and came to this spot and since I'd never fished it I thought and since nobody was here and there's only room for really one car to park I thought I'd give it a shot Supposedly, we have good chance of uh, severe storms tonight. We can do without that. Uh, by the way, Watauga Lake, when I was up there last night, I mean, they've got it, I mean, just about full. I don't. I'm not too crazy about fishing it when it's uh, that high of water. Try something else here. If I can find a little dinky Panther Martin, maybe. Well, that's not the one I wanted, but I'll try it anyway.
certainly like to get a bunch of gills. We've got to keep that bait pond supplied for the flatheads. Last night when I was fishing, I managed to lose about $11 worth plus tax and uh, two plugs that I was throwing. One of them had a weak place apparently in my line. went to cast it and line snapped and there went the plug sailing on out. One of the red-eyed shad that I'd caught so many fish on a couple of weeks ago. And then the other one I hung up in the riprap real close uh, to the bank. Never could jiggle it loose. Fishing can get expensive with plugs. Uh, it's hard telling how many I've got. Uh, of course, can't fish there anymore. The marina has expanded and so on and so forth. But back in the 70s, before I got my boat, I would go out to this point that was near that marina. And it's hard telling how many hundreds of dollars worth of plugs I've got on that point from uh, old humpback rebels to the rebel destroyer spinnerbait. I lost a bunch of them right there, but I caught a lot of fish right there too. I'd fish it at night. After I'd get off work, uh, in the afternoons, depending on what shift I was working at the time, and uh, and I'd fish till close to midnight or something. But I used to really have a ball catching bass off that uh, that point. I'm surprised I haven't uh, heard any boats on out the way, and for that matter, some of them maybe even coming up in here to fish. Let this thing sink a little this time. Well, there was a gill that followed it. Now Boone Lake, of course I haven't kept up with it much through all the years, and especially since I moved out of the area, but uh, it was pretty noted for being pretty much polluted in many respects. But apparently it's cleaned up some over the years. I guess Watauga, uh, best of my understanding, is either the first, second or third, somewhere in there, uh, cleanest lake in the United States. But they still have uh, warnings, you know, there about uh, any fish that you keep about eating as far as uh, they list it for catfish and uh, largemouth too, I believe. I think that's what it says on the sign at the boat ramp. But no more than what I catch, keep, and eat. I don't think I'm gonna worry about it that much. I think I'd still be more hesitant about keeping something out of Boone than uh, most any other lake though around here. Well, how much time have I recorded on that? Like I said, I wasn't gonna sit here and do a whole bunch if you know nothing's active, so. Uh, it's been about 25 minutes. So, for now, we're gonna shut her down. And this is Sentry, signing off. Maybe come back with something a little later. Okay. Now, I wasn't going to stop fishing to set the recorder on, but you can see I have uh, one, two, three, four, I've got five gills and one minnow. They finally started hitting, so I've got enough, I guess, for bait for flatheads for a little while. So, I'm going to try to catch a couple more before it gets too late move some gear back to the car and then break out my cat rods. So, at any rate, 
Time to turn this around. This is Sentry, signing off, hoping for a flathead. Till the next time.